UTPA Athletics getting ready to host the WAC Championship for the first time. We'll take you behind the scenes. We check in on how the new faces are impacting the UTPA basketball teams, and we show you how five Bronx baseball players traded the ping of the bat for the crack of the bat over the summer. This is Bronx Country. Hey everyone and welcome to Bronx Country, I'm Jonah Goldberg. The UTPA women's soccer team finishing up the regular season with three straight on the road, playing their final two matches against teams they've never seen before. The trip started at Bakersfield, 13th minute, off an indirect free kick, Hannah Spetz ahead to Andrea Barrera, just one player to beat, and look at that move. Goal number eight for Barrera, it's Spetz's first assist, Bronx up 1-0. 20 minutes later, Match tied at one. Barrera comes in past the defense and sets up Allison Smith. Finds the back of the net. Bronx up two to one, but the Roadrunners come back with two right away and one more in the second half to beat the Bronx four to two. Two days later, Bronx at Grand Canyon. That's Hadley Tucker setting up for the second penalty kick attempt in program history, and she finishes it. First career goal for Tucker and the first successful penalty kick in program history. The Bronx are down three one at this point, but you can't blame the goalkeeper for that. Erica Gonzalez forced to make a career-high 13 saves on 17 shots on goal. Bronx fall, four to one. Here's a look at the WAC standings. With seven points, the Bronx have clinched a spot in the WAC tournament. Top five teams are all set, although the order still to be determined. The Bronx can finish anywhere between fourth and sixth. The Bronx can guarantee themselves a top five finish by winning their final regular season match on Friday at New Mexico State. UTPA women's soccer, not the only Bronx squad gearing up for a run at a conference championship. UTPA cross country is just over a week away from not only competing in the first WAC championship level event of the season, but hosting them as well. Romeo Villarreal has the story. With UTPA hosting their first ever WAC conference championship this Saturday, Coach Richardson is happy with the opportunities competing close to home provide his team. Uh, it's great for us, you know, there's less travel involved. Uh, it gives us a certain comfort level, you know, being here um, and having the opportunity to have family and friends and fans come and watch us and give us support and having that home field advantage. Even though the cross country season didn't start until the last few days of August, the preparation for this run started as early as this summer. Uh, we've just been working hard, you know, there's no secret. Uh, a lot of training, uh, we've been competing a good deal. A lot of just, just real preparation, looking at what our competitors are going to bring to the table and, and, and working hard to get our team uh, as far as we can. Well, it's a, it's a season-long ordeal. I mean, we've been thinking about the WAC championship since day one, since team camp. We've been talking about how we want to get the guys in the top three and the ladies in the top half. So started off with mileage through the summer and really working hard and getting them all increased from what they used to do in high school because, again, we are a very young team. Uh, most of the kids that are stepping into the line for us on Saturday are going to be freshmen. So just getting them acclimated with more of a college setting as far as mileage and bulk. And we've been moving into our speed sessions and, uh, you know, they're shaping up and looking really good. Along with a large amount of preparation done by the coaches and the team to get ready for this event, a lot of behind the scenes work goes on to put an event like this together. Uh, there's a lot of logistical work and a lot of behind the scenes work. It's, it's actually a great deal of preparation for what turns out to be a, a very short event in just the two races. Um, but a lot of networking, obviously working with our, our great uh, administrative staff here and um, you know, working with the city and the golf course itself and just really trying to put on a, a great competition. A lot of preparation goes into planning a championship event. For example, we've been planning for about six months now uh, for these two races that we're hosting here. There's actually a committee of us uh, that involves both of the track coaches as well as um, corporate sponsorship, internal, external, SID, so there's uh, in facility management. So we've had um, meetings, uh, at least three or four meetings a month for the last few months. So it's a, it's a collaborative effort amongst the whole group. For Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiel. Bronx on three, one, two, three. Bronx! Bronx!
The WAC Cross Country Championships are the first WAC championships UTPA is hosting since becoming a member of the WAC. And Commissioner Jeff Hurd says it won't be the last. Well, I think it's great. I mean, it's, you know, in our league, with, uh, given our geographic disparity, it's important to us to get our championships moved around the conference and uh, in different places. And, and as we move on, and, and there'll be other sports, we have championships at Pan American also. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. After all, Commissioner Hurd is happy with the way UTPA has integrated itself into the WAC. Well, I think they've, you know, they've competed very well, you know, in all sports with the, with the league. And, you know, much like a lot of the other new schools in the conference, and, and quite honestly, basically all of them are new, uh, they've competed well, and, and I expect that, that uh, you know, that growth in their programs will continue also. Before the Bronx ever stepped foot in the WAC, they were competing in the Great West Conference. Only one women's basketball player in the history of that conference earned all conference honors all four years. And now she's on the Mexican national team. Bianca Torre, the Bronx all-time leader in points, assists, and steals, made the final roster of 12 last month in Mexico City and is currently training with the team in Atlanta to get ready for the Central American and Caribbean Games set for November 14th through the 30th in Veracruz, Mexico. Torre's former teammates are excited for her. It's a good fit for her. Bianca was a great teammate while she was here with me, so I'm very proud of her, and I'm, I hope she does really well with the Mexican national team. It's good to see someone that's already been on the team to do something like that, and it, it gives us a bit of confidence that we could be able to do that as well. I think that's a great accomplishment for her because, like, me growing up, you know what I'm saying, freshman year, she was like a big, you know, like a big sister. She boosted me up and boosted the whole team up. She was like working, she worked hard. Like, she's a great worker, and that's a big accomplishment for her. Boyd and Preston, the only remaining Bronx that played with Tori, which means there are some fresh faces on the squad this year. Coming up on Bronx Country, we take a look at the newcomers on both UTPA basketball teams. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Ball on the right wing, goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop, ties the game! Over with three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Bowler from half-court! Bronx win! Bronx win! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Depending on how you look at it, there are between two and five returning players on the UTPA men's basketball team this season. Since three of them redshirted last season, Coach Hipsher looks at his team as having 12 newcomers on a 14-man squad. Tyler Zimmerman has the story. It's a new season, and there are a lot of new faces for the UTPA men's basketball team, who will have nine new players making their Bronx debut this season. With practice well underway, the Bronx are using the opportunity to build team chemistry. Last year I wasn't playing, I was hurt. So this is like my first time actually building chemistry on the court with guys. But uh, off the court, it was not really an adjustment because all the guys that came in were just as nice and just as cool as the guys that were here before. It's just getting them to mix and figure out each other. That's one of the good things about the individual workouts in the summer. You, they have time to get to know each other and what their skills are. And, and you know what you try to get kids to do is play to their own strengths and for other kids to understand their strengths to put them in a successful situation. These new additions to the roster sometimes equals intense practices. But head coach Dan Hipshire says that the newcomers are meeting the challenges head on. It's a, a great new group and we're excited about it. But we have a lot of good leaders and good people in the program. Two of the newcomers include redshirt freshman point guard Elijah Watson from Chicago and guard Everett Osborne, a transfer from L.A. Hipshire says they're doing what it takes to be successful on the court and in the classroom. We're really excited about the type of kid we have here. 
and uh, what they're doing. Uh, the most exciting thing about them is that that grade point average isn't like we had to run them around and beat them to do it. You know, they're taking care of their business on their own, which is really a nice thing. For Osborne, his role on a new team is clear. Uh, my role is basically just to be an impact player. Right away, I'm a junior, so expectations are high, but I have higher expectations for myself. So it's basically just to impact the team any way possible, scoring, defense, being vocal, leading by example working out whatever it is, just impacting the game so we can win. A team first mentality has helped make the transition easier. Every team plays hard, but if you can think and make the right decisions, you're going to give yourself a really good chance to win most nights. The Bronx start their season on November 14th at home against Wayland Baptist University. For Bronx Country, I'm Tyler Zimmerman. In contrast, the UTPA women's basketball team has a large core of returning players in addition to some newcomers who may be able to make a significant impact. Romeo Villarreal has more. With many of the players on the women's basketball team returning this year, only four new players were given scholarships to play on the women's team. And like all his players, Coach Tidwell expects a lot from them, but they have also set high expectations for themselves. From the very start when he first met me, he told me that he had high expectations for me and I knew that I had a, like I had certain goals I had to fulfill in myself and I knew that it was going to be a challenge coming here cuz obviously I get to division 1 school, you know, it's tough, but I knew that he picked me for a reason and I can help the team out a lot. I just got to find the right rhythm. To improve and enhance my skills that I had since high school, of course, um, stay well on the court. Um, improve my weaknesses and just help my team contribute and win the WAC. Three of the four new recruits hail from right here in Texas, but one of the new recruits comes to the Bronx from all the way in Iceland. Um, it has definitely been different and I'm getting used to everything, but I like it so far and it keeps getting better and better. I like the team a lot, the girls are great. And we, like everybody's doing their best, working hard, so I think we are going to have a good season. With women's basketball set to officially start in November, all four of these players are excited, if not a little nervous, about playing their first ever Division I basketball game. Yeah, I feel like we got this, yeah, because we have a great defensive team and offense. We have players that can hit the shot during hard times, so. Yeah, I'm excited. I guess I'm a little nervous, too. I just want to make sure I'm 100% healthy. Um, we have a scrimmage next week, and it's to get some people that I know. We've been, we're playing a lot of people that I do know from high school, so that's going to be exciting too, and that just makes me get more competitive like I was in high school. I'm a little nervous. You know, I have my first game, I'm back as a freshman. I'm a, I don't know what to expect, but I mean, I feel that Coach Tidwell and the coaches are preparing us well, and we just got to do what they say, and I think we'll be okay. I'm really excited for that. We've been working hard for the last couple of weeks, so it'll be fun to actually play for the first time in a while now. Reporting from the UTPA Fieldhouse for Bronx Country, this is Romeo Villadiel. Baseball season typically ends in May or June, but for five Bronx baseball players, a new season started up almost immediately. Next on Bronx Country, we show you which players took part in collegiate winning bat leagues and how it helped them. For some student athletes, particularly baseball players, the summer can be a time to unwind from a long season. But for five Bronx, this past summer was an opportunity to get better. Vince Erickson has the story. Jonah, thank you. It may be fall, but the Bronx Boys of Summer, the baseball team, is already hard at work getting ready for the 2015 season. Now, several of these players played summer league baseball. They say they improved. How can you tell? Well, it could be the sound coming off the bats. Not the ping, that. The unmistakable sound of a wooden bat on ball. One more. Five Bronx played summer league ball and used wood bats exclusively. Catcher Jake Roberts, senior pitcher outfielder Logan Landon, junior pitcher Spencer Greer, outfielder Evan Mason not pictured here, and sophomore first baseman Victor Goddard Jr. And they all rave about that unmistakable sound the sound that's probably my favorite sound in the world just the sound if you get if you get it good the sound of it's just it's unreal it's, un, it's unlike anything else when you ever make solid contact there's that that loud crack it uh it's definitely a good feeling you don't get any sting or anything and it's better it's better than a ping coming off of these metal bats 
That sweet sound, though, comes with a price. Put simply, it's harder to hit a baseball with a wooden bat than an aluminum bat. Why? It comes down to the sweet spot on each respective bat. The light colored one here is the aluminum bat. The dark colored one here is the wooden bat. Now, for the aluminum bat, the sweet spot on the bat where the ball travels the best is from about where my right index finger is to my left index finger. That's about, oh, six, seven inches. Now, I pick up the wooden bat, and the hitting zone on this bat, the sweet spot, is much smaller from where my right index finger is to my left index finger. That's about three inches. The big uh, adjustment is with the wood bat, Vince, uh, you have a very small area to hit the ball hard, as opposed to the aluminum bat, where the sweet spot is a lot bigger. So if you're able to uh, hit the ball consistently um, hard uh, with wooden bats, it becomes so much easier to hit with the aluminum bat. The players and coaches agree. The biggest improvement is that they have uh, some barrel awareness. They understand where the sweet spot of the barrel is uh, because you have to do that with the wooden bats. Um, and coming back after using the whole summer, uh, using those wood bats, their barrel awareness becomes so much better. They understand about the sweet spot um, and how to get the sweet spot on the ball more consistently. With the wood bat, you really got to square it up more. I mean, metal bat gives you a little more leeway. You can hit the ball on the inside. You can cap it a little bit and still uh, still scratch off a base hit. But with the wood bat, if you don't square it up, it's going to let you know. And uh, you're going to have a really tough time hitting the ball that way. Personally, I like using wood better because you it's more, more of a challenge, and you got to barrel the ball up more. Which, they say, spells improvement now that they're swinging the metal bats again. Bat control. I mean, I definitely feel much more uh, comfortable going back to the to the aluminum bats. Much more lighter. feels lighter. Um, you know, and I feel like I, you know, I got control of the barrel and where I want to put the ball. Not to mention the big league feel of wood. That everybody here aspires to be be a big leaguer, and uh, that's what they use. So you got to get used to it. And I've hit with it a lot, so I I really enjoy it. I think it's uh, I think it really shows you who can really hit. It definitely does feel good. You know, you feel feel uh, much different. Um, you know, because you watch your favorite players use those bats. So so it's nice. Uh, it's nice to act like them. And they hope their summer league wood bat experience translates into big league like results for the 2015 season. At the Edinburgh Baseball Stadium, I'm Vince Erickson reporting for Bronx Country. On to volleyball, and the Bronx got off to a blistering start against Grand Canyon. Opening serve, Anjanae Janda. Next serve, Maria Klefolk. And then we're back to Janda. Krista Freitas' turn. The senior serves up an ace. And then comes up with the kill. Five nothing Bronx. Now how about a little more Janda? Comes up with kills not once, but twice. Janda, four kills in her first six attacks. Bronx up 7-2. One point later, Kira Hill making her second start of the year and a sign of things to come. Eight to three Bronx. A little later on, Lopes within 10-13. Not anymore. Janda sends it home. The Bronx had 19 kills and just two errors in the first set while hitting a season high 472. Bronx win 25-15. Skip ahead to the fourth set. Bronx down 2-1 in the match, but off to a good start. Another kill for Janda. Maria Klefolk serves up the ace. And then it's another kill for Hill. Bronx jump out to a 4-0 lead. The Lopes scored the next four to take the lead before a Janda kill gets the Bronx back within one. That's as close as they got. Bronx fall, 3-1. Big matches for Janda and Hill. Janda with 14 kills and four digs. Hill with nine kills and a career high tying three blocks. Haley Durham, a team high, five blocks. Well, if we could have replicated set one, uh, you know, I, I would have felt a lot better about it. But, uh, you know, we played out of our minds. Um, you know, we executed the game plan. We just flat executed in set one and, and never really allowed them to, to, to get into it. And then, you know, props to them. They, they responded uh, like gangbusters. Two days later, Bronx at Bakersfield. Pick it up in the third set. Bronx down 2-0 in the match, but not going quietly. Down 2-1, and Kira Hill ties the set. And that's gonna be a theme here. Down 3-2, and Attack Error ties it. Down 4-3, and De'Ara Reynolds ties it. Down 5-4, and Reynolds and Haley Durham combine on the block, tied at five. One set later, service error, Tied at six. Now the Bronx are down 6-8, but Anjanae Janda comes up with the kill before back-to-back -back errors put the Bronx up 9-8. One serve later. We're tied again, but Hill unties it. Now the Bronx are up 11-10 when Reynolds sends it home. 
The Bronx then pushed their lead out to three on this hill ace, but the Roadrunners come back to win the set and sweep the match. Durham led the Bronx with nine kills and four blocks. Reynolds next with seven kills. Nice job behind the service line for Nausheen Merchant, who had three aces to go with her seven digs. Let's take a look at the WAC standings. The Bronx right behind Utah Valley and Seattle, and those happen to be the Bronx next two opponents. The Bronx host Utah Valley on Thursday at seven, and Seattle on Saturday at one. You know, two teams that, you know, are, are playing different, different ball right now. Um, you know, Seattle, I think, has done a, a d decent job in some recent matches, you know, gotten the results that they're looking for. Uh, you know, again, it's a team that's, you know, got some firepower to them. Uh, they rely more offensively than, than defense uh, and, you know, blocking wise. But, uh, you know, it's it's a match that we can go out and if we'll we'll show our offense, if we'll continue to be offensive all the way through, then, uh, you know, it's something that we can, you know, we can battle with. Uh, Utah Valley a team that, you know, the last couple matches have kind of been up and down. And, uh, you know, definitely some things, if we can go at them from the service line, we can put ourselves in some good situations. UTPA Women's Tennis closed out the fall season with five wins at Texas State Play Day on Saturday. Regan Greenwood, Mariana Ranzenor, and Lison Le Biavant, all with singles wins, while the teams of Greenwood and Katia Stavrilaki and Ranzenor and Christelle Anselm picked up doubles wins. UTPA men's golf got their first taste of the whack last week at the Herb Wimberley Intercollegiate, hosted by New Mexico State. Ramon Ventura Camp led the way with a 5 over 218. Strong final round for Nicolas Platret, who shot a 1 under 70 while finishing just two strokes behind Ventura Camp. The Bronx close out the fall season Monday and Tuesday at Arkansas State. Just one week left in the Bronx Athletic Fund Drive. You can become a member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student-athlete scholarships, so visit BronkAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student-athletes. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The ball on the right wing goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop. Yeah. Ties the game! All with the three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Bowen from half court! Bronx win! Bronx win! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665 2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. Cross Country hosts the WAC Championships on Saturday at 8 a.m. at Palm View Golf Course in McAllen. Volleyball's at home against Utah Valley Thursday at 7 and Seattle Saturday at 1 before visiting Incarnate Word Tuesday night. Women's soccer closes out the regular season Friday at New Mexico State. And the golf teams finish up their fall seasons. The women head out to South Padre Island, while the men are at Arkansas State's event in Gulf Shores, Alabama. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx Country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, Go Bronx! to excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. 
We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. The ball on the right wing goes for the tie. And he does it again! Nolan straight to the hoop. Ties the game! All with the three, with two, the desperation he goes in! Jack Bowler from half court! Bronx win! Bronx win! Get your Bronx basketball season tickets now by calling 665-2221 or logging on to utpabronx.com. This commercial is brought to you by Lax Furniture, an official sponsor of the University of Texas Pan American Intercollegiate Athletics.